the power of purity. It says in Psalm 24 verse 4, who can ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. Clean hands and a pure heart. I want you to notice that this is the prerequisite to ascend into the hill of God. It's both hands and heart. Clean hands, pure heart. Hands, they represent the physical. It's something you can see. The heart represents the emotional, the mental, the, the invisible, the private. Because it's something you cannot see. And God is saying, if you want to ascend into my hill, if you want to come into my presence, God says, I want your hands to be clean. That means that I want your physical life to be pure, clean. And then I want your heart to be pure. But I want you to notice that purity is connected to the heart, not to the hands. God doesn't say pure hands and clean hearts. He says clean hands and pure hearts. It's again confirmed in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are those of pure in heart for they shall see God. So purity has to do with your heart. Cleanness has to do with your hands. In other words, virginity is the issue of hands. Virginity is the issue of the physical. Virginity is the issue of relationships. But the purity is the issue of the heart. It's the, pure, it's, it's the issue of emotions. It's the issue of your mind. Virginity is something that you have to keep yourself from sexual immorality until you get married. But once you get married, you'll no longer be virgin, but you still are expected by God to walk in the purity of heart. Purity is for life. Virginity is until you get married. And God expects our hands to be clean, but our hearts to be pure. I want to let you know that it's, it's a heart issue, not hands issue. It's an emotion issue, not a virginity issue. This issue of purity is what God is after today. The verse that I want to base this message on will come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3, 4 and 5 and 6. And this, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor not in passion of lust like the gentiles who do not know God that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all things as we also have forewarned you and testified somebody drop that in a comment right now the will of God is found in the ways of God I want you to see what Paul is saying and this applies to young people today. He says, for this is the will of God. This is one of the most asked questions among the youth today. What should I do with my life? Which career choice should I pursue? Which education should I get? Which college I should go? Who should I marry? You know, what, what calling should I dive into? What should I do with my life? The will of God for you as a young person is your sanctification maybe you you don't know what you should do with your life where you should go to college what job you should take but I'm gonna make God's will very clear for you today God's will for you is your sanctification whether, whether you take the job in acting, whether you take the job in the entertainment industry, whether you take the job in the education industry, whether you're going to be full-time in the local church, God's will remains for every each one of us and that is sanctification. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. Sanctification. God wants us to be set apart. God wants us to be separated to Him. God wants us to live a holy and a pure life. That is His will for us. See, God's will is found, discovered through God's ways. When you commit your life to the ways of purity, you will inevitably stumble upon the will of God. My first point, purity is the path to purpose. Purity is God's path to our potential, our purpose and the calling that God has for us. See there is you are there is this point that you are at right now and there is the future you where God wants you to be. The dreams, the visions, the callings of God, the prophetic words spoken over your life. 
the impressions that God has given to you as a young person of what you're going to be and a lot of us what we do is we go to school get edu educated you know we go get the proper skills that we need to and all of that has its place but there is a spiritual principle there is an invisible path that exists in the realm of the spirit that you have to be on if you want to go from point a which is where you are to point b to your purpose and that thing that connects point a and point b is purity this is the will of god your sanctification this is God's will for your life God says you're gonna find my will if you separate yourself you're gonna find my will if you stop shacking up you will find my will if you stop watching porn you will find my will if you will stop cussing you will find my will if you will separate yourself from toxic places and toxic people you will find my will when you will live your life in honor to me and get sanctified come on somebody drop that fire emoji right there because the Lord wants us to live a life of purity because that life of purity is the path to our purpose. A beautiful example of that is Joseph. You know Joseph, he had a dream from God and this dream became true but the path to this dream was marked with purity. Joseph committed himself to purity. Joseph did not know directions to see the fulfillment of his dream. In fact, the more he committed himself to purity, the more it seemed like he was getting further and further from his purpose. But in reality, God orchestrated his destiny in such a way where being betrayed brought him closer to his destiny. Being thrown into the dry pit brought him closer to his purpose. Being put in the Potiphar's house brought him closer to his purpose. When he walked away from the lure of the temptation to commit fornication, it brought him closer to his purpose. When he went to jail and it seemed like that's it, he is furthest from seeing the fulfillment of his dreams. But in reality, he was actually the closest to seeing the fulfillment of the promise of God on his life. But the path that he took, the exit if I could say, the, the highway that he took was the highway of holiness, the path of purity. And he somehow stumbled upon his destiny. He walked into his purpose. He walked into the fulfillment of the dream of God for his life. But my friend, it was not an accident. It was well calculated by God. All Joseph had to do is keep his heart pure. Pure from offense. Pure from resentment. Pure from sexual immorality. Pure from the pagan practices that was practiced around him. As long as he kept his heart pure, God kept him on the track to his purpose. Come on somebody, this is good preaching right there. As long as you will keep your heart pure, God will take the responsibility to keep you on the track to your purpose. Drop that amen in the chat right now. If you are receiving what I'm sharing with you. See, the purity is what connects you to your purpose if you don't know how to get to your purpose if you don't know how to what to do next do this sanctify yourself separate yourself for God yield yourself to living a life free from offense living a life free from pride living a life free from lust living a life free from greed as you keep your heart pure you will not miss your destiny. God will move things. God will use what the enemy meant for evil for your good. God will take those turns that it seems like life is just spinning out of control and he will place you exactly where you need to be because purity is the path to purpose. Number two, purity leads through prison before it takes us to the palace. Purity leads through prison before it takes us to the palace. See a walk in purity, a life of purity is a process. This process has a price that we have to pay. One of the reasons many people do not embrace the life of purity in their heart, in their mind and also in their physical body is because there is a price that you have to pay to live in purity. 
for Joseph the price is that he had to go to prison. He had to go through a time and a season of heavy restrictions upon his liberties. See what is prison? Prison is not where you die. Prison is where you have boundaries, where you are restricted where you have limitations, where you can't do what you want to do, you can't be where you want to be, you can't talk to who you want to talk, you can't have what you want to have. Whereas other people outside of prisons, they have liberties. In prison, you have restrictions. Purity takes a person to a prison. What I mean by a prison is that there comes a restriction on your liberties. Whereas other people can hang out at those places on Friday night, you can't. Whereas other people can watch whatever they want on their television, you can't. Where other people can smoke, you can't. Other people can get drunk and get high, you can't. Other people can date and fornicate, you can't. And it first seems like lonely place to be in prison. It first seems like God why are you letting me go through that? You're depriving me of pleasures of life. But you must understand is that there is a price to pay to live in purity and that price is self-imposed restrictions and limits to your liberty. It's when you know that even if something is not sin but it's not beneficial it's not healthy for your soul. It's not healthy for your future. In light of your past, this thing is not good for you. And you put yourself in the prison of limitation and restrictions knowing you're not going to live like this all your life. And behind this prison, once you pay your dues, there will be a palace. There will be a glorious purpose that you will walk in. Come on somebody, give God some praise right now. Spam that chat with that fire emoji if you are receiving what I'm sharing with you today. So many people are afraid of paying a price of purity and instead they simply cruise in compromise. You know Joseph went to prison because he was pure. Samson went to prison because he refused to be pure. After Joseph's prison time he went to the palace. After Samson's prison time he went to his funeral. I'm gonna tell you one thing you're gonna pay now and play later or you're gonna play now and pay later but you're gonna pay if you refuse to pay today to walk in purity you will pay tomorrow as a result of not living in purity you will pay that with the loss of license with the loss of freedom unwanted pregnancies shame and guilt temptation of abortions you will pay later with soul ties sexually transmitted diseases multiple of broken relationships you will pay later you will you will pay either now or later but I'm gonna tell you one thing purity is on sale right now the best time to be pure it's the lowest price to pay for purity and that is right now not later you can't postpone it to tomorrow tomorrow the price is getting higher tomorrow it's gonna increase tomorrow it's gonna go through the roof everyone will pay but God allows us to choose our prison so it can usher us into the palace if we refuse the prison today and we say no I'm gonna flirt I'm gonna commit sexual immorality we will have prison the only problem is that it will be a consequence of not choosing purity instead of a consequence of choosing purity and it will not lead us to the palace it will lead us to the problems in Thessalonians we read today about God says this is my will your sanctification and then he goes in and begins to break it down of what that looks like. He says that you will abstain from sexual immorality. So God wants us to abstain from sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is fornication is sex before marriage. You know adultery is sex outside of marriage. God wants us to abstain from every form of sexual immorality. Joseph did that. He ran away from Potiphar's wife. She was flirting with him and the Bible says that regularly every day she was wearing him out and Joseph he would go into the house to work. He didn't go there to entertain himself. He didn't go to jail. He went there to work and at this one particular time she just grabbed him and says hey you're gonna lie with me. You're gonna have sex with me and Joseph abstained from sexual immorality. He ended up in prison. He fled from her. He lost his garment. He was willing for her to mistaken him blasphemy him 
make fun of him, cook up a story about him, but he did not let himself be stained by sexual immorality. Let me ask you a question. Are you flirting with Potiphar's wife or are you fleeing Potiphar's wife? Are you flirting with that which Christ has called you to flee? Are you asking yourself how close to the edge can I get without falling? Or are you saying how far from sin I can get so I can stay close to God? The Bible says let there be among you no hint of immorality. Are there hints of immorality in your life? Is your life stained with immoral hints? The scripture says it is good for a man not to touch a woman. For those of you that are in a relationship, are you dating and fornicating or are you dating and walking in purity? Are there hints of immorality all over your Instagram stories, all over your Snapchat, all over the things that you are watching and consuming on TikTok? Are you fleeing or are you flirting? Because the scripture makes it very clear that if you are flirting, that means you're not paying a price of purity. You're trying to avoid the prison. You want to get the shortcut to the palace, but I'm going to tell you the shortcut to the palace is not flirting with Potiphar's wife. It is fleeing her and paying the price of being in prison, meaning having limits to your liberties. The Bible says later on, not only that we have to abstain from sexual immorality, but then it takes a step further. He says that each one of you will learn how to possess its own vessel in sanctification and honor. That speaks of not just, you know, that I don't yield to sexual immorality, but that I control my body. And I have a shirt that I'm wearing that represents this message. That you submit your biology to your theology. That you submit your sensuality to your spirituality, your feelings to your faith. That you submit your chemistry to your convictions. Learn to possess your body in honor. So many people are possessed by their passions instead of possessing their passions. My friend, you are not an animal that you have to be ruled by your urges. You are not an angel that you deny your feelings. Angels in heaven, they don't get married. But you are a human. You are in between the angel world and the animal world. You have a body but you are a spirit and therefore you should not let your feelings, your passions rule your life. The Bible says learn to possess your vessel, your body, your passions, your urges and your desires. Get them under control of your theology, of your belief system, of your conviction and of your faith. Come on somebody drop that fire emoji right there in the chat whatever you are watching right now. Possess your passions. Make your passions your prisoner. Do not be imprisoned. Do not be a captive. Do not be a slave of your desires, of your sexuality. Make your sexuality your servant. Means you tell it what to do. You tell it what it can have and when it cannot have. This applies also to masturbation. So many people what they do is they, they say, well, you know, since I'm not fornicating, I'm going to masturbate. Masturbation is the soul of sex. And sex was intended to be enjoyed in the context of marriage, bring a husband and wife together. It was never given to us as a chemical release. In the scriptural context, it was given to us to bond to people together. God wants you to possess your vessel. God wants you to control your urges. God wants to give you the power to walk in authority and in power and in self-control. Part of paying that price for walking in purity is possessing your vessel in honor and sanctification. Taking control of your eyes, taking control of your ears, taking control of your hands, taking control of your other body parts where they are subject to Christ. Will you submit your biology to your theology not the other way around. So many people live in a day and age today where they have redefined God. They have made love into a God. Because see your belief system will affect your behavior. If you see love as a God then whatever you feel like doing that becomes the law for you. That's how the culture lives. And therefore today love between a man and a man is considered normal. Why? Because in the culture love is God. But for us as Christians God is love. God decides what's right and what's wrong. Not the other way around. Not our feelings, not our urges and not our biology. That doesn't decide what's right and wrong for us. 
and therefore we submit our biology to our theology not the other way around we don't change God's word because the culture has changed and because it has become popular and what I'm saying right now sounds like a hate speech my friend this is God's word God loves you and he says I want you to learn to possess your vessel don't be a slave to your body. Don't be a slave to your passions. Don't be a slave to your urges. Put them under subjection to your faith, to your convictions and to your walk with God. And then he goes further in Thessalonians. He says, you know, possess your body. Abstain from sexual immorality. And then he says, and I ask you that you do not defraud. Take advantage of your brother or your sister. My friend, you know, it's also a price to pay on a practical level. What does that mean? When you are in a relationship with somebody or when you are friends, God doesn't want you to defraud your brother or your sister. God does not want you to stir up feelings in the opposite sex that you are not able to meet. If you're not married to that person, don't stir up feelings by your dress code, by your vocabulary, by your touch, by your gifts, by a particular way that you look at that person that will cause certain things to be aroused, certain feelings to be aroused and then this person already desires for these feelings to be fulfilled but you're not at the place to do that and therefore the Bible says do not awaken love until it pleases. Keep that love boxed, keep that love in the box, keep those feelings in the box and don't play games with somebody's feelings. Don't play games with somebody's heart. Don't use somebody's heart for fun. So many people today date around just for fun. If you want to have fun, get a dog. If you want to have fun, hike a mountain. If you want to have fun, get some swimming lessons. If you want to have fun, find friends, join a local church, join a small group, start serving, get a hobby. But don't play with somebody's heart for fun. Do not defraud your brother and sister. You may say, but I'm not fornicating, but you're flirting. I'm not fornicating but you're stirring up desires that you're unable to meet. Do not defraud your brother and sister. So there's a price to pay for purity and the price is that we're not asking a question how far can I get without falling. The price we are paying is that we are living out of our convictions, not convenience, not our compromise and not all these worldly cultural preferences that the world wants to impose upon us. We're not conformed to this world but instead we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We see ourselves as spirits not as bodies. We're not subject to our bodies. We are not enslaved to our urges and to our cravings. We are enslaving our urges and our cravings. That's why we fast. That's why we, we discipline our body. That's why we pray. That's why we put our body into subjection and if the body wants it, the body doesn't get it because if it's against the Word of God, it's against our good. And so that's the price. So the first thing I mentioned is that purity is the path to the purpose. Secondly is that purity leads through prison before it gets us to the palace. And the last thing is that purity is found in the pursuit of God's presence, not in the pursuit of purity. Now purity is not a point you cross. It's an ongoing pursuit. Purity is not a point. See for some people like I used to be addicted to pornography when I was a teenager. So in my mind purity meant this. The day I stop looking at pornography is the day I'm going to be pure. In my mind purity was a point. This point meant I am no longer looking at porn. That means I'm pure. For some people maybe you're, you're struggling with masturbation and in your mind you're like man whenever I overcome this that's when purity is my on the other side of me being free from masturbation. Maybe for some of you you're fornicating and you're dating and you're like man we just can't stop it just feels like once we get married then I'm gonna be pure. See in your mind you're still seeing purity as a point and that's not how purity works. Purity is a path not a point. Purity is not a point you cross or you reach. Purity is an ongoing pursuit. That means it never stops. And purity is impossible if you are passive. Purity is impossible if you are parked. So many Christians live and their hearts are parked at the curb of their preferences. At the garage of their doctrinal beliefs. Their hearts are cold. 
their hearts are callous their hearts are not on fire their hearts are not burning they don't have their running shoes on they're not hungry for God I want to tell you something that purity is not something you get by chasing purity purity is something you get by chasing God purity becomes a result of pursuing God something happens when those of you who run and exercise you know that then you get healthier you lose weight your heart gets healthier you get healthier you get appetites to eat better because this life of exercise and this life of running physically does something to your heart and to your health my friend if you want to be healthy spiritually there is one secret you gotta run 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 after God you can't just walk you can't just jog you can't just go backwards you can't just stand you can't just park your life at the garage of religion you can't just park yourself on the side and say I belong to a church I go to a church I believe in God demons believe in God and they're going to hell but are you running after God if you want to burn with purity if you want to have a desire for holiness in your life there's only one thing that will produce that and that is running after God maybe this message will cause you man I need I need to change this I need to change that I need to get rid of this I need to get rid of that no 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 stop 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 the first and the most important thing that we need in our life is to put our running shoes on and run passionately after God chase his heart pursue him be like David who was a man after God's heart it never says David had God's heart he was simply in the pursuit of it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Thirst after God. As the deer longs for water, as the deer pants for living water, for water, so my soul longs for you God. The Bible says that God is and He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He is waiting for you to put your, put your running shoes on and begin to run after Him. And I'm going to tell you one thing, this is what's going to happen. Purity will be a byproduct of your pursuit. Purity is never reached when we seek it it finds us it becomes part of who we are as we seek him because it's impossible to lay hold of a holy God and not be affected by it lay hold of a righteous God and never be affected by it in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says I say then walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh Paul gives us a key Paul gives us a secret do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He doesn't say don't fulfill the lust of the flesh so you can walk in the Holy Spirit. He says walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the key to purity is your pursuit after the Holy Spirit. Your pursuit after God cleanses your heart. It cleanses your hands. It purifies you on the inside. It gives you holiness. It gives you that righteousness that you desire. It makes you different. The Bible doesn't say that if we walk with the Holy Spirit, if we run after God, that we will not have lust of the flesh. It does not mean we will not have temptation. It does not mean that we will not have trouble in the flesh. It does not mean that the world will turn pink and everything will become paradise. It just means that we will have the power not to fulfill the cravings and the urges of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. The fruit of you walking, pursuing, chasing, going after God is that God will give you power to control yourself. God will give you power to control your thoughts. God will give you power to control your urges. God will give you power to control your desires. God will give you power to control your passions. God will give you power. If you want to walk in purity, the benefit is that it will connect you to your purpose. The price of purity is you will have to put limits on your liberties. Limits on your phone. You will have to put limits on what you watch on TV. You will have to put limits on when you go to sleep, when you wake up. There's going to be restrictions and boundaries in your life. And if you hate restrictions and boundaries, there's no way you can walk in purity. Because you're going to have to make a covenant with your eyes. You're going to have to pluck certain things out that cause sin and throw them away from you. And these things, they take a jab at your liberty. And those of you who kind of do whatever you want with your life, there's one thing I know about you. You're not pure. I'm not saying you're going to hell but you probably are living in one where you're disconnected from the peace disconnected from the presence disconnected from the power and on the outside you may pretend that you're, you got your life figured out but on the inside you're a total mess and God wants to rescue you from that he's calling you today and he says would you come and follow me would you come and follow me you're like Lord but I don't know how he says just follow me 
and as you follow me you will notice certain things you can't take with you and those are the things I want you to deny those are the things I want you to forsake those who follow me he says deny your flesh deny yourself pick up your cross and come after me the price for purity is putting limits on your liberty and how to get this purity is simply pursuing I'm not talking about believing in Jesus I'm talking about pursuing Jesus believing in Jesus makes you a believer but pursuing Jesus makes you a disciple and disciples develop disciplines disciples reach their destiny disciples live out of their devotion to Jesus who are you today are you a believer hiding in the pew of the church hiding behind the fact that you belong to a Christian church your dad and your mom is a Christian or are you a disciple who carries the cross who follows the lamb where the lamb would go and who lives with restrictions to their liberties limits to their liberties because they're seeking to please the Lord more than anything in their life let me pray for you whatever you're watching right now I want you to drop that in the comment the prayer emoji your way of connecting with me I want to pray that God will restore purity for those of you who lost it that God will restore passion for his presence for those of you who abandoned it and for those of you who you became passive maybe college happened boyfriend happened disappointment you met hypocrites during COVID you really just just anxiety took its hold on your heart and your life maybe somebody passed away whom you knew and you prayed for and today you're disappointed in God and your heart is no longer pure let's just ask God to purify it by his grace let's ask God to purify it by his blood and let's come back to the Lord let's put our running shoes on let's go after God let's see that excessive weight we picked up during COVID the spiritual weight I'm talking about that will begin to be broken off of our life addictions pornography masturbation for some of you maybe some sexual fantasies that you got trapped in that God will begin to break that off being in relationships that you're not supposed to be in maybe experiencing sexual dreams or soul ties that God will begin to bring freedom into your life in Jesus name Father God I pray right now in the name of Jesus over every person that is watching this stream for those that are re-watching this stream I pray Holy Spirit that you will come into their situation right now I pray for those that are right now battling in the area of purity they don't have it they feel dirty they feel guilty they feel condemned they feel like the enemy is beating them maybe certain demons are attacking them at night or perhaps soul ties are bringing confusion into their life Lord we just come against that by the power of fire of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus right now in Jesus mighty name be disconnected right now from every evil force from every evil covenant from every evil altar that the enemy has set in your backyard to hold you back from your future and from your purity in the name of Jesus be disconnected right now be free in Jesus name be free in Jesus mighty name receive your freedom to run after God father I pray for those who have had their hearts polluted who have had their hearts divided I pray right now for those Lord God who maybe through COVID perhaps through college age or perhaps through other things they found themselves parked and passive I pray that you will stir up a fire right now a desire for your word a desire for community a desire for prayer a desire to live running after you God I break every spirit of laziness God I break every spell over their life or any just kind of that blanket of lethargic spirit I break that off of them right now by the name of Jesus be free from that laziness pursue God Lord kindle that fire inside of them that will not die kindle that flame inside of them that will not go out in Jesus mighty name Lord I pray for those that are in prison right now for those that are in suffering because they have chosen to walk in purity their heart is hurting maybe perhaps certain relationships are no longer there they feel alone I pray like as you strengthen Joseph and your word says and the Lord was with Joseph in jail I pray that they will feel your presence right there at the absence of their boyfriend at the absence of their girlfriend at the absence of certain pleasures that the world offers let them experience pleasures of your presence in Jesus name I bless these precious young people by the power of the Holy Spirit help them to walk in you and live in you in Jesus mighty name amen thank you for watching